So hello everyone, welcome back to my another tutorial and as you can see right now I'm having a convolutional neural networks in TensorFlow tutorial. So in this part we will implement a helper function that we'll use when implementing a TensorFlow model and we'll implement a fully functioning call net using TensorFlow. After this tutorial we'll be able to build and train a connet in TensorFlow for classification problem because, well, you'll see. So, in previous tutorial, we built deep neural network using TensorFlow and the most practical applications of deep learning today are built using progra programming frameworks which have many built-in functions you can simply call. So, as usual, we'll start by loading the packages and right now I'll use a GPU and I'm loading it. I'll use the same rows, columns, challenge classes as I used before. Actually same functions, not to worry about. After my TensorFlow will be loaded, I will load other stuff here. So I'm loading my simply parameters. Here I'm loading the functions I'll need and here I'll just run the cells to load cats and dogs dataset we are going to use and after this well actually in previous tutorial we had uh, built a fully connected deep network for this data set but since this is an image data set it is more natural to apply a connet to it so to get started let's, let's examine the shapes of our data here and after my data will be loaded I'll just print the shapes out so you could examine how they look like and we'll see. As before I'm using a one hot encoded and I will use a softmax function. So if you want you can add more classes but you'll need to change this prepare data uh, function for you. So you know what I mean. And next I'm just waiting for my data to be loaded. So our data was loaded. Let, let's print our data shapes. So as before, we have 6,000 training examples and 1,000 test examples. But right now, our data shape will be in this type. And here is our labels. And this is one hot encoded. Well, actually, this is because we are using softmax. So let's move forward. and. TensorFlow requires that we create placeholders for this input data that will be fed into the model when running the session. So we'll implement the function to create placeholders for the input image X and the output Y. And we should not define the number of training examples for the moment. To do so, to do so we could use none as the batch size and it will give us the flexibility to, to choose it later. So here is my simple simple placeholder function as you can see here our inputs are quite same as our data shape there is height white and channels and we give it a name of x and here we give it a name of y so here we define our function and i'm creating uh, placeholders so next we will initialize the weight filters w1 and w2 using the TensorFlow contrib layers, Javier initializer. We don't need to worry about bias variables as we will soon see that TensorFlow functions take care of the bias we need. So also that we will only initialize the weight filters for the con2d function. So TensorFlow initializes the layer for the fully connected part automatically. We'll talk about more that later. So dimensions for each group of filter will be weight, height, channels and filters. And here I choose it, weight, height, channels and filters. And when we are, well actually this should be the same as this. And well this is can, this can be changed. So it doesn't matter anymore. If you want you can play it out later. And here I have uh, some kind of problems. Wait a moment, uh, I'm having an issue here. I don't know what's the problem here. What 
why the syntax is wrong. So actually, I don't know what's wrong here. Right now it works for me and before it wasn't working. So I can't explain actually what's the problem here. And right now it should print out our parameters of weight 1 and weight 2 after it initializes them. But it takes quite, quite a long because, well, it's doing this for the first time. If we'll do this another time, it will be much faster. As you can see, our, my parameters were initialized and there is 32 filters. So you can see all of them here and here. Because of this syntax, it doesn't print me these layers. They, they were assumed and they only print these. So this way we initialize our weight 1 and weight 2 parameters. And okay, let's move forward. So in TensorFlow, there are built-in functions that carry out the convolutional steps for us. So there is TensorFlow, TensorFlow Neural Networks COM2D, and this function convolves weights by filters on X. So this will be used for constructing our further model. In this last function, the fully connected layer automatically initializes the weights in the graph and keeps on training them as we train the model. We don't need to initialize these weights when initializing the parameters. So we will implement for propagation function so below to build the following model. Uh, and it will be quite simple. It will be con2d, relu, max pool, and again we'll do con2d relu and max pooling, then we flatten our model and we do a fully connected layer. So there is a detail at following parameters model we'll do. And let's just jump to our model. So here we retrieve the parameters from our parameters dictionary. So here we are doing our first convolutional layer and we are doing the padding of one and it means that our input will be the same as output then we add, do our relu max pooling again and here i as you can see i added a print so we can track what how our uh, shape of data changes so we can i can build this and yeah i can build this also and as you can see here is our 64 by 64 by 32 layer as input will be z1 so here is our actually image shape then we do our relu after relu shape doesn't change it. then we do a max pooling of 8x8 eight eight and strides of 8x8 eight eight. so this means we are minimizing our input by 8 times so as you can see here now it's 8x8 eight eight and filters doesn't change it's 32 again and we again do the convolutional layer relu and we do it again by 4x4 four four. and right now it should be also smaller four times so yeah it is 2x2 two two at the end and as I can see I have some problem here I don't know and I can try to Build it again? No, doesn't help. So give me a moment, I'll check what's wrong here. So, uh, welcome back before I cut the video because I was receiving some kind of error. So I rebooted my computer and notebook and it seems it fixed right now. So here it is, our output and our output shapes of our whole forward propagation function. And if you want, you can try to play with it. You can change something on, or insert additional layers. I won't waste time for, for this right now. And I'll move forward to the cost function. So we'll implement the compute cost function and we might find uh, two functions helpful. So one of them is TensorFlow Softmark Cross Entropy with logits. 
it computes the softmax entropy loss. This function both computes the softmax activation function as well as the resulting loss. And there will be another function, uh, reduce mean. This function computes the mean of the elements across dimensions of a tensor. We'll use this to sum the losses over all the examples to get the overall cost. So we can build this. And before there was an error, I hope we won't receive it here. So it, everything works just fine here. And it prints our shades here from my propagation. And I won't waste time deleting these prints. So the cost is minus 1.6. And next function we will need for our model is mini batch grid and DC. I copied this main mini batch function from my last deep network TensorFlow tutorial and I adapted it to new, new dataset shape. So actually I changed these lines and few of these lines so that because our input shapes is different than before, but I won't talk about this much. So we can move to our model function. So we'll merge helper functions we implemented above to build a model. We will start training it on my cats and dogs dataset as we used before. And the model should create placeholders, initialize parameters, do a forward propagation, compute the cost, and create an optimizer. In this is the whole model structure. And then we'll create a session and run a for loop for number of epoch. We'll get the mini batches, and then for each mini batch, we'll optimize the function. So we will implement the three layer ConNet in TensorFlow. So this will be ConNet, ReLU MaxPool, ConNet, ReLU MaxPool, and then we do flatten and fully connect the layers. So actually everything is written here. I do epo 200 epochs, I use 64 mini batch, and I use print cost as true. So here we do uh, create a list of for our costs. We create placeholders, initialize parameters, do a for propagation, we compute a cost, and here with optimizer, we do all the back propagation we need, and we don't need to write back propagation function because all the stuff is done by TensorFlow in backend. That's the beauty of our frameworks. And next, we will initialize global variable initializer, and actually, we are starting the training here. And here I'm using a print, then I'll plot the function. I hope I have inserted Matplotlib library. Then I'll save the parameters and we'll return it. You can do whatever you want. And actually, I'm saving the model to the folder so, at, so I can upload this to GitHub uh, so you could later download it and test it by yourself if you want. So actually, we can start training and it will... Right now, the training is on... I use a TensorFlow framework on GPU, so training should be quite fast. I haven't initialized a mini batch, I think. Yeah, so I'll begin the train. Not yet. Okay. Again, problems. No, I didn't initialize that this function. So actually it starts to train. It will go for 200 epochs. So I just wait and then we'll move forward to our another step. So we've finished training our model for 200 steps and let's see how it performed. Here are our cost after 200 steps and let's see. Parameters have been trained and test accuracy is 0.7 and that's an amazing result. Our algorithm can recognize a cat and dog within 70%. That's the best accuracy we received up to this point because before maximum we could get was 62, something like that. And as better accuracy, that as harder is to get it. So it's quite nice, it's quite nice. In future tutorials, we'll see how we'll receive a better accuracy. So, 
Now we can test our model and when we save the variables it creates a .meta file. This file contains the graph structure therefore we can import the meta graph using following line and restore the values of the graph. So let's import the graph and check what are the tensors and parameters inside. So here is all of them. We have their softmax, full connect layers, gradients and so on. There is a lot of them. So we can now take a picture of our cat or dog and see how our model performs to this. So here is the dog image I have in my file structure and we simply can load this up. So I created a new session with loaded checkpoint and the, all the parameters inside and doing only simple uh, for propagation with softmax. So we just build this. Okay, build this again. And as you can see, there is a dog and it perform. It guesses that it's a cat, I think. And if we will try with with a cat image, let's see how it works. It says a one. So let's see what we have here in our file structure. And if it is a dog, it should be one. If it's a cat, it should be zero. So yeah, as you can see, it's to totally wrong. And what was the chance that we'll receive such wrong results? But anyway, test was 0.7 and in future tutorials I mean even in next tutorial you will see how to receive even better accuracy work doing smaller model or much easier with the Keras framework. So I should congratulate you so we have finished the tutorial and built a model that can recognize cat and dog with almost 70% accuracy on the test set. So if you wish, feel free to play around with the dataset further. You can actually improve its accuracy by spending more time tuning the HIPAA parameters and add dropout or something like that. And once again, nice work. In next tutorial, we'll start building CNN and Keras. And thank you all for watching. Like this video, subscribe my channel, share it, and we'll see in a next tutorial. Goodbye.